In example 3, we're given this function, h of t, the height at time t of a ball that's thrown, is negative 4.9 t squared plus 5 t plus 2. So that gives the height at any time. h is in meters, and uh, time is measured in seconds. And we're asked, how high is the ball at its highest point? So notice the derivative uh, definition here, but instead of f, I've got h, capital H. So we're going to find the derivative of this function, which will give us the velocity function, because this is actually just a distance. The rate of change of distance is velocity, or speed. Now, when I go to find h, the capital H of t plus h, I'm putting t plus h in place of t here. So it's negative 4.9 times t plus h squared, which is this quantity here. When I put this in place of time here, 5 times t plus h plus 2. So up to here, those first three parts, that's the h of t plus little h. Minus h of t. Well, this is h of t, so this is all what's in the second set of brackets subtracted here. Now, just like in the last page when I squared the x plus h, when you square t plus h here, it'll be t squared plus 2th plus h squared. So when you multiply that all by the negative 4.9, you get these three terms right here. So that's where those terms come from. And then we, we distribute the 5 in here, so we get 5t plus 5h, and then that's that 2. And when I remove these brackets, all the signs change, so we get these last three terms here. Now, notice once again, like in the example on the, on the previous page, we have some terms that are opposite, so they add to 0. The negative 4.9t and the 4.9, sorry, t squared add to 0, as do the 5t and negative 5t, and also the positive 2 and negative 2. So we actually only have three terms left. And notice that they all have h's in them, so this h will divide into the three of those. So we divide negative 9.8 th by h, we get negative 9.8 t. This would become minus 4.9 h, and 5h divided by h is just 5. Now we can take the limit as h tends towards 0, because the, the part on the denominator that was approaching 0 is gone. So if we, if we take the limit as h tends towards 0, this term right here becomes negligible. And so the derivative is just negative 9.8t plus 5. So that's the derivative. Now, when you throw a ball, and I'm just going to do a little drawing here. When you throw a ball, it's going to form, its, its path will actually f form a parabola. That's not the greatest parabola, but now when, you, when it's rising, the velocity, or h prime in this case of t, is greater than 0. When it's falling, going down, h prime of t is less than 0. Okay? When it's at the very top, at the, at the instant it's at its very highest point, at that point it's neither rising nor falling, and the speed, or derivative, would equal 0. And it has to equal 0 because something can't go from being negative to positive without becoming 0 in the middle. Okay? It's not like it's going to like disappear and you know, not go through zero as it goes from negative to positive. So that's how we can find when the highest point occurs. So that's why I would set my derivative to zero and solve for t. So if I solve for time here, I would get 9.8t equals 5. And so we're dividing 5 by 9.8, I get 0.51. Just around a half a second is when the highest point occurs. Now we're asked, how high is the ball? So I would just take this and put it right back in my original function to find the height. So h of 0.51 seconds. We're just putting back in place a time here. And we get about 3.28 meters. So it was about 3.28 meters off the ground at its highest point. In example four here, we're asked to uh, find another derivative and a uh, different kind of function now. Uh, the function is a rational function, 2 over x. So I'm still going to use my uh, first principles definition of the derivative. And so the function is 2 over whatever x is. So if we put x plus h 
in place of x here, we get 2 over x plus h. So that's why this is 2 over x plus h from the f of x plus h. f of x, well, this is f of x. So we put 2 over x in place of f of x. Now, we cannot yet substitute 0 in place of h to try to evaluate this limit because the h is still in the denominator. And in fact, if we put 0 here, we get 2 over x minus 2 over x, which is 0 in the numerator as well. And so that, that would be an indeterminate form. You can't evaluate that. So what we're going to do when we have rational expressions here is we're going to get a common denominator. So the common denominator would be the product of the two denominators. So I'll multiply this one top and bottom by this de denominator and the 2 over x by x plus h top and bottom. So I'm multiplying each rational expression by the other denominator and then I've got a common denominator, x times x plus h. So in the numerator here, 2x, 2 times x is 2x, minus 2 times x plus h is minus 2x minus 2h over the common denominator. I don't need to write it in two different parts because I have a common denominator. x plus h times x, same as x times x plus h. So there's my common denominator. And of course over h. Now these 2x's, 2x minus 2x, they add to 0. So we're actually just left then with negative 2h over x, x plus h over the h. And remember the way you, so these just added to 0. The way that you simplify this kind of expression is remember you're dividing rational expressions. So you take the numerator expression and you multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator, which looks like this. So you have negative 2h x x plus h times the reciprocal of h over 1 is 1 over h. Now, these h's divide out. So the divide out, all we have to have to do, actually have to do, is multiply the 1 by negative 2. So that's negative 2 on top. And we'll go up here and make some more room. Uh, negative 2 over x times x plus h. Now we can evaluate the limit because that h that was in the denominator divided out. Now, if, if h tends towards 0, then essentially in the brackets here, it's just x plus 0, or x. So we have x times another x, which of course is x squared. So the derivative then is just negative 2 over x squared. So that's the derivative of 2 over x.